Welcome back everyone, it's Create Garden Rooms. We're here today for another full build tutorial. It's not gonna be like our normal tutorial. It is going to be just a step-by-step -step process. On the carcass, we're gonna tell you guys a little bit in detail how we do it, but from then on, it's just gonna be the steps to get the job done in the fastest, most efficient way. So, as you can see, here's the finished product, but we're gonna get straight into it now with the carcass, and we're gonna go from there. Right, let's get straight to the walls and how we build the stud walls square and then we lift them up. So if you come over here with me, what we do is we build our stud work. So we've got our three meter wall here. We've built the wall plates and we've put our uprights in at 400 centers. Now we've laid this bit of OSB on top and this is what squares the wall. You can build this frame, but it's not gonna be square. This is just a quick way of doing it. So we put the OSB dead flush with this end of the wall here and here, and then we fix it here and here. And then we come down to this part, and if, the, if your square is running out, it's gonna be a different measurement here. So we just knock the wall at that end down and get it dead flush the whole way down. So we actually leave a two or three mil gap, so the OSB is just sat above the wall plate. But if you look there, it's the same gap the whole way down. And then once we've got that, once we've manipulated the wall around, moved it up and down, we then fix here and here, and that way we know the wall is gonna run square the whole way down. And we'll cut our neck sheet, We'll fit that on and the wall will run that way and then we'll lift them up. OSB sheathing has run all the way down the wall now. So that's all dead straight the whole way down. Now we've drawn our lines down the boards. That's how we do it. Put the lines where the joists are. We measure them so it's easy to nail them in. And then what we do is we get a track saw and we just buzz off the tops. Just saves time cutting them when the boards are over there. We lay them all down and then we just mark where we need to cut them. Chop them all off in one and that's the wall square. Then what we'll do is we'll go around with this and we'll just literally fire these in all the way along. Just with these nails, we've got, um, what size nails are we running in here? 50 mil ring shank nails here. So that's what we use um, and that holds it just fine. Okay, our wall's up. Now we're gonna leave that there because that's in our way. If we have any supports holding that up plumb, it's gonna be in our way for building this wall on the floor. So we've left that there for now and we've put our wall plates down for the sidewall. Now, we're gonna show you a little bit in detail with this because some of you may find this useful to figure out how to put your pitch on the sidewalls, just so it follows your roof line with your drop from the front to back, instead of having to put wedges in and all that sort of stuff. So it's a nice way of doing it, it's a bit smarter and it's quicker in the long run. Um, so we've put our wall plates down, they're 4220. And then on the front of our building, we're gonna have a 2170 stud. And on the rear, those are 21 studs. And that gives us 70 mil drop on our roof over the length of the building. Now, the way we're gonna build these sidewalls is this part here is the slant on the roof. And this is gonna be the wall plate that we stand all this way up. So that's the way we're gonna build them. We've got our 2170 there and our 2.1. We've squared the wall. And now what we're going to do is work out what our angle is for each stud because we're going to have to cut a straight cut on the bottom of the stud and an angled cut on the top. And I'm going to show you how you work that out. But for now, let's just work out the angle that we've got in this wall. We'll get our sliding bevel here and we'll put that in there because we've squared that corner and where our roof slope is here, this is the bit we need to find the angle on. So we've set that and then we're going to bring it over to the saw and just gonna line it up on there and that will give us our degrees. So we'll get that dead in line with that. And then we'll look down here and give us what that is. And as you can see, that's a one degree. So we're gonna be cutting all of our cuts with a one degree on the mic, on the, this bit here of the saw. We're gonna angle it over and cut all of them at one degree. Um, so they follow the slope of the roof. Now, some calculations here to work out this. If you come over here, uh, I did a little calculation earlier. So we've got our 4220, that's our wall length. Divide that by 400 because that's the gap our studs are gonna have. And that gives us 10.55. So that means we're gonna, in between this wall from end to end, we're gonna have 10.5 studs. So we've got a 70 mil drop and we're gonna divide that by 10.55. And that gives us 6.6 .6 millimeters. So each stud is gonna be 6.6 .6 mil smaller than the previous one. So we're gonna start with 2170 minus 6.6, .6, and that'll be this one. And then whatever that measurement is, minus 6.6 .6 and so on. It's easy if you just leave your phone out and do your 2170 and then just minus 6.6 .6 each time as you work your way down. 
then you've got no way of forgetting what length your studs are. Now, if you come around behind me, Toby, I can show everybody. We've cut this one here, and you can see from the camera, we've done our angle this way. So because the roof will be falling that way, we do our first minus 6.6 .6 measurement here, and we cut it at an angle, and we put it in our center there, and that will just fit in lovely, and it will follow the roof line the whole way down. And that's it, then we'll lift that wall up, build the rest, and um, that's the way we do it. Okay, we've got this wall up. This is our side wall. Because this is gonna have a storage room in it, we've got our 900 by two meter high storage door. It's gonna be a single aluminum door. That's the aperture we've built for that there. And then over here, we've built our 1500 by 800 window. We've built it a little bit bigger. So we've got 1502, like 20 mil. So we've got 10 mil either side of the window. And then, um, 820 on here as well, just so we've got 20 more up and down. Just so when you put the plasterboard, you've got 10 more either side and it will just meet up to the window nicely. That's why we do that. Front door aperture here, we're having sliding doors on this one. We've put this six by two above um, and we've done our lintel supports here. So that's how we do the front wall. Just thought I'd show you guys that. Um, it's pretty straightforward, you know, straightforward lintel support, bit of four by two on top and then your six by two on top of that. Um, if you're doing it to permit development, I mean, what's our base height here? I think we've got, we've got about 100 mil deck height there. It's a bit less with the dirt, it's about 60 mil, I think. If you're building it, I'll just give you the measurements now for the lintel support. Uh, we've done a 1974 stud here, or upright. It's got four by two on top of it. Um, and then you've got your 195 on the top of there. And that's your, your six by two, and that's the support. That's how we do it. We're going to put some uh, noggins here because this is the door aperture. We're going to solid make that a bit more solid so when we're fixing the doors, we've got something to go into. And uh, just quickly, how we fix the lintel onto these lintel supports. We just use 100mm screws on the bottom there, just fire them up all the way, staggered along. Um, and then from the sides in as well, at an angle from the top, just to stop it moving that way, which it will do once your roof joists are on, that lintel's never moving that way because it's all fixed and locked together. But just while it's here, that's how we do it. Same on the other side, just loads of screws on the bottom there. It just fixes it to the lintel supports, the door cheeks, and it's good to go. We've got OSB now get all of that OSB'd up um, and then we're going to start working on the roof joists. Okay everybody, that is stage one of the carcass complete. So stage one is going to be the walls, stage two we're going to get onto the roof. Just do a little review of what we've done here. So as we've shown you, we've got all these walls up. We've now wrapped this building in our breathable membrane and that is just to release any moisture that gets trapped inside the building when you're building it and also while you're using the building. There may be a bit of moisture gets in there but that can all get out and breathe and dry out because we're gonna double batten so there'll always be a gap between our final cladding and the breathable membrane. That's why we do that. And we run it past all the way down here. If there's any ever, ever any moisture build up on the side, it's all just gonna drip down, fly past the concrete and drip down onto the floor. We do that the whole way around the building. Um, if you look underneath, our DPC is wrapped up on the wall. So that, that when we laid that DPC out, you know, it was about this wide. We had a bit hanging here. We've folded that up the wall and then we've put our breathable membrane over that. So any moisture is gonna drip past that and not go into the room. Um, we've got bits left inside here, as you can see a perimeter all the way around the room that's there for protection. So when we do our full DPM, damp proof membrane, that will sit on top of that and then you'll be completely moisture resistant on your floor. Um, on the windows and doors, we've just wrapped the membrane inside. It just finishes it off nicely. It keeps any water getting down to that OSB while you're building. Like it rained a lot last night, but as you can see, we've wrapped it all the way over the tops of the walls and then that will let and no moisture get onto your boards while you're building. Um, and that's why we do it. So uh, yep, just before we go into the next step, we fix our wall plates down onto the floor using 100 mil screws with wall plugs. So we drill them in, you can see here, we go through that into the concrete, we plug it, and then we put a little washer so it holds onto the plate. If you don't put a washer on, you're gonna just pull that screw through. That's what we do there. While we get onto the, when we fix the door apertures, so we put a couple here just to add extra security. We countersink them so they're completely flush. So when we put our door frame on there, if it doesn't need any packing, the screws won't interfere with that. So make sure you countersink the ones that are going on door apertures. Okay, stage two of the carcass build. We're gonna get on to the roof joist, which we've got here. It's a five by two. Um, these are 4.8s and they're gonna go 
straight down the building this way. What we do is we, we do them at 400. So we start from right to left in this case. We've started there, 400, 8, 12, and so on, all the way down. And we've marked the same on the front here. That's how we do the roof joists. We lay them on them that way. And we, we don't follow the existing 400s on the studs for a, a reason here, because we're gonna screw up into the joists. So to fix them onto the building, we're gonna put 100 mil screws through this into the roof joists. And that's the way we secure them down. So make sure you're not putting them above your studs, otherwise it's gonna be a bit awkward to get in. You're gonna have to go from an angle, um, which we have to do on the front anyway, because we've got that lintel. But on the back, it's just nice to get that extra fixing. So we've got them here, we're gonna measure them up. This is how we do them. What have we got? We're going in with 4.8 as our measurement. So we're just gonna trim the face down on this. We're not gonna cut both ends here. We're just gonna cut the front off to make that nice dead plum cut along the front. Where is my square? Ah, there it is. So this is how we just tidy up these ends. We don't use the big chop saw because it's just a bit of a headache to get a massive 4.8 length on and to cut it here, someone has to hold the other end, it's just a headache. Put your trestles out, you can just do it yourself. Tidy up the end, so put your mark there at 4.8. Line your blade up to that with your square and that's gonna allow you to do a nice, easy straight cut. as a guide to stop that blade moving at all. And now you've got your perfect, look at that, dead straight cut there. And then we're gonna lift this one up, just out the back there, get it onto the front. And this is gonna be our first joist, right on the corner of the room, just over there. And that's how we're gonna do it. And then we're gonna run them all the same, exactly the same as that, all the way down. And then we're gonna work on fixing them. Got him? Yes. All good? Right, so we've got all our joists up on the roof now. Now you may be wondering why we're doing a 4.8 meter span with only fiber twos. However, we are gonna be having our partitioning wall in the middle of the room here, aren't we? Um, and that's why we're getting away with these just single fiber twos. If this was a 4.8 span, well, it's actually a four meter span, but we're now about four and a half, 4.3, 4.4. Uh, we'd be doubling up the five by twos because they would be dipping. Once you finish this roof deck, it would have a dip and it could pop your plasterboard. So you want to be doubling up the roof joists. We do have a video of that on the channel, so go check it out. It shows you how to like fix them all together and do them, put them up like that. Right, let's get on to this part now. We don't have to worry about it dipping now because we're going to be building our partitioning wall once we've got all the deck on and we're dry. Um, we're going to start here. So we've spaced them all out on our marks and we have now fixed this joist. We leave an 80 mil overhang on the back from the OSB. So from the outside of the building, 80 mil to the back of the joist. That's there. And then what we do is we fix it. If you could come over here, mate. I hope they can see. We do it so this is this edge of the timber is bang in line with this wall plate here. So there's no gap here. The joist will have a belly in it or something, but don't worry, we'll get to that later, how we sort that out and how we plumb this wall, because this wall's still a bit loose. We'll show you how we plumb that all up to that joist and fix it all. So we'll get there, we'll get there. That's just not in this stage. And then again, slide over your joist, bang in line with that just in the corner. The reason we keep that there is we've got something to plasterboard to on the roof, on the ceiling when we're doing that. Right, so that should have left us on my calculations, 375 on the front. So we measure up, bang onto the mill, 375. So that one's at 375. Now what we do, is we get our steps, because we know the front's the most important. There could be a couple of mil discrepancy on the back, but that's not too bad because it's obviously unseen and you're gonna have all your capping boards on it. So don't worry too much about the back now. Just make sure you get that first one right. And then we'll pull this one up and we'll get this to 375, which is there. That's bang on 375. And then we're gonna to need to pull it over a wee bit because it's not in line with that wall plate. So that's that one there. Then we'll do the same at the back. It's got a couple of mil, so we'll tap that over. Right. They're exactly where we want them now. Now we're gonna fix them. So impact, screws, come over here, Toby. Um, on these first ones, 
because we're on a stud here, because we, we need this stud here for our plasterboard, we're not gonna be able to go straight up into them as we would be able to on this one. So what we'll do is we'll go at an angle and we'll hold the joist. As easy as that, look at that, that's absolutely solid. We'll chuck another one in there for good measure. And then when we get to the front, we do it slightly different on the front. We're gonna go up the ladder and what we're gonna do is I'll show you how we do this right on the back of the joist. So if you pass me that camera, Toby. Thank you. As you can see here, I've gone at an angle there, right at the back, because if you look, the joist doesn't actually sit on the whole of the front of the wall plate. It's only the back of the joist that does. So you wanna be fixing here, otherwise you might be bedding up the joist like that. And that's how it goes at the angle, just like that. And now that's fixed in. We'll do one this side and one that side. That's two on the front. That'll be completely secure and fixed. We're never lifting those up. No wind is ever gonna get under that and lift it. So we're happy there. So what we've done here is we've fixed this end and we fixed that end. And now we've put our string line right there, right on the bottom of it. And that's gonna run the whole way down. And we've just wrapped it around the end there. And then obviously what we're gonna do is we're just gonna knock all the joists up to that string line and then you're gonna have this dead plumb line the whole way down. We just pull them up like that. We'll leave them just that tiny bit off because they've got all the burrs on the end. We'll knock them back like half a mil off it just so the string can still move. That way you don't end up pushing the string bit by bit down and then it will be running off. So always make sure the string's just got a tiny bit of movement in it. That way you know you're not pushing it up. And whilst you're going down, make sure your joists stay on your markers. Otherwise you pull them forward they'll be up line and then one won't be on the marker, you'll pull it across and it'll push the string out. So line them all up dead perfect first and then just pull them out like this towards you up to the line and that's it. Okay, we've got all these dead straight now, all plumb along the string line on the front. They're fixed, but all the joists are gonna have bends in them and we've got to do our noggins in the center. Uh, so, but we wanna plumb this wall up. So what we've done is we've put support in. This wall was a bit plumb. The front and the back walls are actually dead straight, so dead plumb, they're all good. But this one had a bit of a bow in it. And when we're gonna be pulling these across to straighten them out, it's gonna pull the walls in. So you wanna support one wall when you start doing this. So we've supported this, so this is plumb up. Now, this joist here has got a big belly in it. If you come down here, Toby, if I show you, take the camera, I'll be able to show you what I mean. Look at that, it's massive. So it needs to come in like there, you see? But the minute it's bouncing out, so what I do on these is we put a little nog in there. If you can see, on the other side there is that little wedge. Now what I've done is I've just fixed that in the bottom there with a couple of hundred mil screws. We'll do one there, um, one there. We'll probably put three on each wall. So one up there, one here, and one there. And then hundred mil screws in. And then what we'll do is we'll fix this first joist into that and that will keep that dead straight with the wall plate. And then we can do our noggin measurements, which will be uh, this measurement here, because they're all the same as they go down. So what we've we got here, we've got 33. So 330, that is what is our gap there. And so our noggins will all be 330 and they'll work the way the whole day down. And that will true up every joist all the way down. And then when we get to the end, we can then plumb this wall up with the last joist because this will be dead straight on this one and then this will be fixed we'll do the same principle with our little noggins there on the edge and we'll tag them into it to keep this straight to this wall and then we'll just choose our size noggin for this which will then pull this wall in or out that's how we do that and we're going to get onto it okay we've got all the noggins up nice bit of job the nice nice bit of carpentry that come and have a look so we've put them in straight the whole way down we stagger them this way because we like to fix in through here and here on each end. It just gives that solid feel to it um, instead of nailing them. It takes a little bit longer, but it's a proper job, it's a proper job. So now we've got to the end, this is what I was explaining about earlier. We've put our little tag on the back of that and we fix this joist to it. So this joist is now straight the whole way down to the wall plate. Now we put the level on the wall. We can see that we're just a little bit out and it needs, if I push it, it's like five mil. So if we pull the bottom of the level up, we can see down there, it's about five mil. So I've cut this last noggin 
five mil too big, so it won't fit in. But if I push the wall over, we can get it in. Actually, we'll put it this side here. Right, so we'll do that. And then that will push that wall. That will plumb that wall now. So if we put this level on it, that is exactly between the lines. So that's where we want to be. We'll fix that in, and that is our noggins done. Now on to the next step, which is the side laddering. So if you come around here, we've fixed these up already. I've cut a load of these at 235 mil. And they will be going on the side there. That will be our ladder to pull our wall perimeter, well, our roof perimeter out. And that enables 235 from the inside joist there, enables us to have 50 mil batten. So one row of 25 mil, another row of 25 mil, because we double batten. Um, and then a piece of cedar goes up in there, which we'll show you later in the video, so keep watching. Um, and that all works out just fine. So when you put your cladding on, it all meets up to the bit of cedar and the overhangs perfect size. Okay, so we've put our laddering down the sides, as you can see. And we've done the same on this side too. Perfect. Uh, the way we did it, nice and easy. You get your 235 and you literally just lay it on top of the wall plate. Because the wall plate's at an angle, we don't have to worry about that. And that will just fit it in nicely there. And you just fix a 100 mil screw into it. You can put two in if you want. One's fine because we're going to be putting our perimeter on now. That'll hold it tight when we put all our deck on. That is enough. Um, this is literally just to hold the perimeter while we put the deck. So perimeters on the sides are going to be exactly the same length as these. So 4.8s. So we're going to cut two four eights now, fix them onto the sides. The way we do it to make sure the same length is we just put a level on the front and offer them up to it. And that means you maintain that big, long, straight line. And then we'll measure from edge of perimeter on the sides for the front and the rear. So we'll get into that now. I won't talk too much about it because it's quite straightforward. And that will be the roof deck done and ready to be OSB'd. Right, that is the roof perimeter completed on the front there and we've done the roof perimeter on the rear of the building. That is the roof deck finished. All we need to do now is OSB it. Uh, so we're not gonna show you that. Like I said in the video, this isn't a how-to, it's just the steps we use the garden room for. Uh, on stage one, just the carcass, we, we have been going through the steps a little bit more in detail just to show you how we do it. Um, but moving forward now, it's just gonna be step by step, the way we do it, the process, and how to do it in the right way, and what's the most efficient way of doing it. So. OSB is going to be going on now. We'll show you how that looks in a little bit. And then we're going to lay the rubber on after we've fitted the OSB. Okay, that is the carcass complete. The OSB roof deck has been glued on the tongue and groove joints and it's been secured down with some 50 mil ring shank nails with the nail gun. You can use 45 mil screws if you like. It's just easier for us just in nail gun because we've got one. Um, but that is the carcass finished. Now I went into a bit of detail on that. I didn't say this video is all going to be at how to do it, but with the carcass, I thought that was important just to show you guys the way we do it. And we think it's the fastest way just to get that sort of structure up. Now you're dry indoors, it's fine. So we've laid the rubber on top. That's just going to sit there for a couple of days now. A bit of heat from the sun, iron the creases out, and we're going to tack it every meter just to hold it on. The next step of the build, it's very important you do this, is to put your vertical battens up. Now we're going to fit those every, 800 um, on the metal sides and where we're going to be putting cedar we do them every 400 into the studs now the reason we do that is because the cabling on our builds goes all the way around the outside of the building if you don't have your vertical battens up and you run your cable for say the soffits and stuff then you're going to have to be cutting your batten out where that cable is so vertical battens next and then we will just lay some cable for our seed for our soffits before we put the cedar up just so it's there so when we put the cedar up we can pull them through we're just going to drill holes all the way along here and then we're going to run our cable around the side of the building back to where we're going to have our consume unit and stick it through the wall that is the next step uh, as you can see inside we've built this stud wall um, so yeah it might be handy to see if you're going to build on like this with a partitioning wall you know with a storage room that's how we've built it we've just put a wall plate on the floor and the top and obviously because the roof has a slope we've set this onto the roof deck here and that that top uh, wall plate there is going to be at an angle so if you're cutting your studs it's just a one degree fall which is the same as all the studs on the on the walls that we did earlier so we've cut them at a one degree and pop them all in and just put some noggins in there for structural um, because it's obviously holding the roof make it nice and solid and then fix them into the floor again with our concrete fixings you know just plugs 100 mil screws that's all we use SDS bit 
little black uh, brown plug and then a little washer and then a hundred mil screw and that will hold that wall plate secure and then we fix the wall plate to the stud all on top right so let's get on to the next stage okay onto the batten so we've done the batten if you just come around here follow me you see what we've done every 800 down there because it's the metal sheets we don't need it every 400 just every 800 i'm sure you can see that so that's worked out we've put our vertical ones on the front and down this side um just so like i said earlier we can put our cabling over it as we run our cable for example if we're down that side it's going to be going over the batten like that then we put horizontal ones on that will keep that cable away from the cladding i just thought i'd show you guys how we've got the cable run so this is our soffit cable so we've started the cable over here with this one and we've run it it's just a daisy chain so down here down here down here to this one and then we run it down the wall and then the cable will go into the wall there to the switch and then we've got these spurs so this spur is actually going to be going up here and will be connected out here onto one of the lights um, and that will just come down and feed the up and down lighters so when you turn your soffit lights on the up and down lighters come on so there's a spur there and there is another spur here which will be connected to the end of this light and then obviously we're going to run a cable from the switch all the way to the consumer board and we'll run that over the top here and through so just thought i'd get that on we've started our soffits now this is how we run them so we're going to start the cedar here run it back cut some holes in and then we'll be ready to uh, fit the lights when the electricians come right that's the cedar soffit done take a look what we've got we've cut our holes in for our lights we pull the cables through and that's how we do them on the cedar if you look over here we've run them down the side as well and we've done the same around the back perimeter if you look at this nice little detail here, what we've done when we finish this board up is we just put a 45 degree bevel on the end to match the, um, the bevels on the actual board. So you've just got that nice fix in there. And the way you do that is obviously you just get a little bit of cedar like this, put it up on your miter saw, spin your miter saw down on a 45. If you look here, we've got a little nice square edge there. If you come along and you get this out and you literally just run this Oh no, what's going on here? No, our power's not on. Hold up. Right. Yep, and if you run this along there like that. See, we get a nice little 45 degree bevel to match that. And then when it meets up, it is lovely. So that's that done. Next step now will be the roof. So we're going to glue that put all our fascia boards on and then do all our roof trimmings and that is how the roof looks from the top nice and smooth no bubbles a bit of chalk left on it but that will go with the weather um, it looks very nice and smart okay that's the roof completed we'll just go through the steps of that first of all you put your capping boards on capping boards um, and then you're going to lay your rubber around well we've already laid that so you're going to take all those little screws out that we did fold it back glue it put that down, let it settle for a little bit, and then you're gonna go around and do all your edge trims, which these plastic bits on the top. Once you've done your edge trims, you're gonna put your corner pieces on, and then you're gonna come down here once all is done, and you're going to fit corner pieces on the bottom as well. We haven't done that just yet, because it's the end of the day. Um, and if you come around here, once we did all that, we did our guttering as well. So we've just fitted our guttering to the back here. Um, that's how we do it. Um, so and the next step is the plasterboarding but toby's done that today so we've done it at the same time however that would be the next step um as you can see that's finished but we haven't got our doors in so we haven't finished our reveals uh so it's all normally best to fit the doors before you plasterboard but you can do it either way it doesn't matter too much we'll just wait till the doors here tomorrow fit them and then we'll do our reveals so that's the plasterboarding done next step would be put the doors in and then we can have the plasterers to come in and come and plaster okay that is the doors and windows fitted. So we've got sliders on the front here, opening from both sides. And then over here, we've got this window. The glass was actually the wrong size that we got sent, so we're waiting for the glass, but this is the window. And then we've got this nice solid aluminium door here for the storage room. And then the next step, obviously, once the doors are fitted, is to have it plastered. Um, so we've had the plasters in and they have plastered the room and it looks fantastic so very happy with that that would be the next step um, and once we did the plastering we've just chucked our finishing battens on so we went around and did all our horizontal battens which are spaced about every 500 or something that's enough for cedar done that all the way around the building and if you come down here we 
Once we did that, we then fitted our box profile clad into the rear of the building. So if I move out Toby's weight, he can show you that. And that is those steps done. So that's the way we do it. Now, the next step will be to do the floor of the garden room. Um, so what we're gonna do, as we've got this concrete basin here, uh, the slab, we now need to put um, a DPM over it. So that'll stop any damp coming up. It does have a DPM under it, but we're also gonna do a DPM on top. And then we're gonna put our Celotex down, which we use 90 mil on this build. Um, and then we will use our Tongue Groove 18 mil OSB. So those are the next steps. Uh, we'll do that in this room and we will do it in the storage room and then it will be ready to laminate and put the skirting board up. Right, okay, we've completed the OSB in here, 80 mil tongue and groove, floors down, it's all glued, fixed, ready to go, um, and we're ready now to do the, ready to fix the laminate down, so we've got that here. First off, we're just gonna give it a mist coat because the plasterboard's dry. Um, so we'll mist coat that, then we'll put the laminate down. Maybe look over here. As we've got the storage room on this build, we have now finished this storage room. We've put the OSB floor down and we have ply lined the walls. So next step is mist coat and laminate and then we will do our skirting board after the laminate. Okay so that is the laminate down and we have sized up our skirting board so we just cut it to a rough measurement just so we know we've got it all right and then we're just going to tease it and that's how you do skirting board the best way. So you get your corners in like that, work your way around and then so these bits here you know, to get these bang on perfect, we just do a little bit bigger and then we'll just go to the saw and we'll just tease bit by bit. And that's how you do the skirt nicely. Again, with these corners, how to get them perfect. Again, just put mitomate on that bit of spray and activator, hold it together, fix it like that. And then you can offer it up, tease that side down and you can offer it up and it's gonna fit in there perfect. So fix this first and then pop these corners in. That's how you get the nice corners. Now, once we've done that, the next step would be the cedar. And I've been doing that while Toby's been doing the laminate. I have been fixing on some cedar on the front here. So we're just cladding it. The electrician's been, he's fit most of these. We've got these up and down lighters to put on. Um, and then we're gonna come down this way and we're just gonna fix all the cedar. And that will be almost finished. Right, okay, that is the job complete. I'm just gonna go through the last steps that we did. We fitted the skirting board. So if you just come in here, Toby, and they can see, fit the skirting board. We've then corked the skirting board. And then we have corked around the windows, or the window, and we've corked around the door. So if I pass the camera here, see our finish there, around the doors, that's how we finish them. Nice and sleek. Um, we've got all of our lights in, painted, electrician's been. We've hung our radiator, sockets all in. Laminate's done, looking perfect. I've finished the cedar out here. We fitted these lights, which are wirelessly controlled, which are cool. So when the customer's coming down from the house and it's dark, you can turn these on and off via these little wireless controllers. They're nice and neat. Uh, so I'm just gonna shut this door now. That's us finished. We've just cleaned the windows. As you can see, it's raining, which is a bit of a shame. However, doors are fitted. Cedar's done, cedar reveals, soffits, everything. Um, we've coated it with the UV Protect uh, all down here, look at this, this window's so nice, 1.5 meter window this, looks really nice, now we've got all our reveals in, we've siliconed around the window, it's all nice and sealed up. See it on here, all this is finished too, around the door reveals, and our storage room is finished as so. Um, and that's it, so, got our consumer unit over there as well, that's where the electricians fitted that. So, if we just come around here, I'll we'll finish off this video nicely. Okay, sorry it's raining, but that's the way things go sometimes. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has helped. If it has, please hit the thumbs up button just on the corner there. And if you want to see more of this great content, it would be fantastic and much appreciated if you could subscribe. So thank you very much for watching and we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.